In this video, I'll be going over 10 reasons why the furnace is not getting power or why the little LED light on the control board is completely blank. I believe that an easy fix is the best fix, so let's start with the easy stuff first. The first thing I would do if my furnace is not getting power is go to the circuit breaker panel, find the circuit breaker for your furnace, and then, even if it looks like it's in the on position, just go ahead and reset it. Flip it to the off position and then back to the on position. If you get lucky, then a trip breaker was the only problem you had and your furnace will come back on. If you're not so lucky, then let's move on to number two. The next thing I would check is to make sure that the furnace power switch is on. I can't tell you how many times I've been to somebody's house that was suffering in the cold simply because their furnace power switch was off. They were really smacking themselves in the forehead when I just come out there and flip the switch. The power switch is usually found on the side of the furnace, but if you're not finding yours on the side, then sometimes there's an electric conduit going into the furnace and that conduit will lead you to your switch. It could be five feet away. And oftentimes what happens is either you yourself or maybe your kids are playing, this switch can accidentally get bumped off and the next thing you know, the temperature in your house drops down to 60. If you found your switch off, then congratulations, your problem is fixed. If not, then let's move on to number three. Number three is to check your thermostat batteries. And even though it might seem like the thermostat has nothing to do with the furnace not getting power, a lot of times when people's thermostat goes blank, they think that their furnace is not getting power either, and that's when I get called out. So just to be sure, if your thermostat has batteries, especially if the screen is blank, make sure you replace those batteries before continuing. You simply have to pull the face of the thermostat off the wall, and it should snap right off of the base of the thermostat. Just kind of wiggle it or look all around it to see where the little hinges are or the clips. That should come off. Once you have your thermostat off, you're going to be able to see if it has batteries or not. Not all thermostats will have batteries, but if yours is battery operated, once you pull it off the wall, you should be able to see them. And one more thing I want to mention is that weak batteries are a thing. So the screen is still going to be lit, it's not going to say low battery, but the batteries could be too weak to close the switch inside of it. So if you don't remember the last time you changed your batteries, just go ahead and replace them even if everything looks good. And while I'm talking about thermostats, let's move on to number four, which is bent thermostat pins or a loose wire connection. When people take their thermostats off the wall, sometimes they don't go back on as easily as they came off, so they force it on there and they accidentally bend one of these pins. If any of these pins are bent, then there's a chance that your thermostat will not be powering on your furnace or your air conditioner. So if your thermostat is not going back in, don't just smash it in. Take it out and take a look what's going on, what's in the way. The pins on the thermostat are all supposed to go into these slots right over here. So if any one of them is slightly bent, then we have a problem. So while you have your thermostat off the wall, take a look at the pins and make sure they're straight and also take a look at the wires going into the thermostat to make sure none of them are loose. Simply tug on each one of the wires and make sure none of them come out easily. If they do, then put the wire back in and tighten down the screw to make sure that the wires are in there securely. If your thermostat pins are nice and straight and the wires are tight, then let's move on to number five. The next thing I would check is the furnace door switch. Besides the power switch on the side of the furnace, every single furnace also has a door switch that turns the furnace off if that switch is disengaged. To get to the door switch, we are gonna have to take the furnace door off. On my furnace, this whole entire panel comes off. Your furnace might have two separate doors. Just go ahead and pull both of them off. But usually if you have two separate doors, a top and a bottom, your furnace door switch is going to be wherever the blower motor is located. On my furnace, the blower motor is behind this door over here, so if I take this door off, I should be able to find my door switch. This door also happens to have the sight glass, through which I can see the little LED light on my furnace control board. As you can see, that light is on, that means my furnace actually is getting power. And if I flip the switch off, that light goes off. But if your furnace power switch is on, yet that light is off, then we know that there's a problem. Somehow the power is not getting to that control board. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and find the door switch. And here is the door switch. 
Mine is taped shut because it's easier to troubleshoot things with the furnace door switch taped shut. So if your furnace ever got serviced, chances are you're gonna have a piece of tape over your switch as well. This door switch will not always be on the bottom of the control board. Sometimes it could be up on top, either on one corner or the other, or right in the middle. So if I take this piece of tape off, pay attention to what happens to this little light. Bam, it goes right off. So what happens sometimes is maybe your furnace got serviced or maybe you yourself for some reason had this door off. If this door is not put back on properly, this switch will not close all the way. It has to be more than halfway closed in order for that light to come back on. And for those of you that have a multimeter, there is one more thing you can check before we move on. This is pretty rare, but it is possible for the door switch to fail. This means that even if the switch is closed, there is still no power going through. If we look at the back of the door switch, we see two wires coming into it, one on one side of the switch and one on the other. In order to test the switch, I'm gonna put one meter lead on one terminal and then put the other meter lead on ground, which is basically anything metal in the furnace. And my camera is not focusing on the meter, but I am getting 120 volts on the top wire over here. I should have 120 volts coming out the other side. And my meter is showing 120.4. So we have voltage coming into the switch and we have voltage coming out of the switch. That means the switch is good. By the way, sometimes the furnace power switches go bad as well. It's pretty rare, but I have seen that and I have replaced a few of them before. And the way you would test this switch with the multimeter is the same exact way that I tested that switch on the bottom. But anyway, this is getting more complicated than it needs to be. Basically, if you confirm that the door switch is closed, we can move on. Next up, I would turn the furnace power switch off and then locate the three amp or the five amp fuse on your control board. On my control board, the little fuse is right over here. But just so you know, there are some Lennox furnaces that use a mini circuit breaker instead of a fuse. So if you can't find a fuse anywhere, try looking for a little resettable breaker instead. The purpose of this little fuse is to basically take one for the team. If there's a random voltage spike or a short somewhere, this fuse will burn out before any of the other electrical components can get fried, such as the control board, the thermostat, or the transformer. So let's go ahead and take this fuse out and take a look at it. If the fuse is burnt out, you're gonna see a little burnt mark right in the middle. If by chance you have a fuse that you can't see through, you can easily check it with your multimeter by testing continuity. If I touch my two meter leads on either side of the fuse, I should get a beep. And I am. If I'm getting a beep, that means the fuse is good. If there is no beep, that means the fuse is bad. If your fuse is burnt out and you go to buy a new one, I would suggest buying more than one, maybe a little box of them even, because sometimes when you replace it, the new fuse immediately burns out again. If that happens to you, that means you have a short somewhere and it needs to get addressed before you replace the fuse again. If you need help with tracking down a short, I have a video where I show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to it in the comments. So if your fuse is not burnt out, we can go ahead and put it back and move on to number seven. Number seven is a bad transformer, which is usually found somewhere around the control board. On my furnace, it's mounted right underneath. So with my power off, I think what I'm gonna do is just drop down this control board assembly and flip it over so we can get a better look at that transformer. I really should have done this earlier with the door switch. Look how much easier it is to see everything from the back here when this thing is completely out. So with the door switch, I was essentially checking one terminal right to the metal, basically to ground, and then the other terminal to ground to make sure I'm getting 120 volts on both sides with the switch closed. And right next to the switch, we have the transformer, whose purpose is to reduce the voltage. A furnace has two electrical circuits in it. It has a high voltage circuit and a low voltage circuit. The transformer's job is to turn the high voltage into low voltage. So it drops down the voltage from 120 volts to 24 volts. And if this transformer goes bad, there might be voltage coming into it, 120 volts in, but there's no voltage coming out. You're gonna have zero volts instead of 24. And if that's the case, the LED light on your control board is gonna be absolutely blank. 
Let's put this control assembly back in and then I'll show you how to test the transformer to see if it's good or not. In order to test the transformer, we will need a multimeter and then all we need to do is find where the wires from the transformer go. What we're looking for is secondary 1 and secondary 2. So if we look over here, we see SEC2 and SEC1. The 24 volt wires that come from the transformer go into these terminals. After I located where the low voltage wires from the transformer go, I'm going to go ahead and turn the furnace power switch back on. We see the little LED come on. And then I'm going to put my two meter leads on secondary 1 and secondary 2. And I should be getting anywhere from 24 to 28 volts. And as we can see, I am getting 27 volts alternating current. That means my transformer is good. If you're not reading any voltage or the voltage is under 20 volts, you either have a bad connection with your meter leads or that transformer is bad. If you checked all of the things I've mentioned so far and you haven't found your problem yet, then let's move on to number eight. Another reason why a furnace might not be getting power is because of a bad or plugged up condensate drain pump. If you have a high efficiency furnace, that furnace creates condensation, so it needs a drain. Usually the drain line is routed right to the floor drain, which is somewhere nearby by the furnace, but if you don't have a floor drain nearby, then what they usually do is put a condensate drain pump and then route the hose to drain the water somewhere else at a different location. What happens is that sometimes those condensate drain pumps go bad and they stop pumping the water out, or they get backed up with a bunch of sludge and buildup inside of them, so the water is no longer able to drain out. Those condensate pumps have a float switch in them, so if for some reason the water is backing up in it, it'll shut the furnace off and it's not going to turn back on until that problem is addressed. Another variation of this is if your furnace has a drain pan under it. If you have an attic unit, then there's a chance that you have a drain pan under it and those drain pans often come with a sensor in them that shuts the furnace off if water is backing up in the drain pan. After you clean out the blockage from the drain line, the furnace should power back on. Reason number nine is kind of a unique animal, but I have seen it multiple times, and this is where the furnace thermostat is wired in series with the high limit switch, which is the switch that is responsible to turn the furnace off if it's overheating. So when people forget to replace their furnace filter and the furnace begins to overheat, the thermostat will actually go blank when that high limit switch trips and everything will shut off. Normally, these high limit switches are supposed to automatically reset after they cool off, but once in a while they get stuck in that tripped position, and until you free it up or replace it, the furnace will not come back on. If you don't remember the last time you replaced your furnace filter and you just replaced it, yet your furnace is not coming back on, there is one thing you could try doing that could get your furnace to turn back on. To do this, you're simply going to need a screwdriver, a nut driver, or some kind of a wrench or pliers so you can knock on your furnace high limit switch to hopefully get it freed up. It's a little hard to see it behind everything, but it's that little brown box where the two orange wires go to. What you'll want to do is take your tool of choice and then just knock on that high limit switch with a few firm taps, just like this. If your limit switch is stuck in the trip position, giving it a few good whacks like that is usually all it takes to get that thing to reset. If you think that your furnace problem has something to do with the high limit switch, I have another video that's called 10 reasons why a furnace overheats. You might be able to get more ideas of what to look for in that video. And last but not least is number 10, and that is a bad control board. I purposely put this one in last place because I like to check everything else before condemning the control board. But figuring out if the control board is bad is actually pretty simple. If you have 24 volts going into the control board and the 3 amp fuse is not blown, yet the LED light is not coming on, then that usually means that the control board is bad and it needs to be replaced. Oftentimes, if you take the control board out and flip it over, you might even see a little corroded spot or a burnt spot on the control board where it burnt out. And that is all I had. But before you go, I have a question for you. Why did the burglar take a shower after robbing the house? Because he wanted to make a clean getaway. And just in case you didn't like that one, I have one more. The other day, my friend asked me if I have any laundry puns. 
I told him, yes, I have loads of them. 